Welcome back to another resurrection project. This time I've got something rather special for you. Let's have a look. is a Suzuki TU250X. Unlike the two other bikes I've resurrected in the previous episodes, the uh, Kawasaki Eliminator and the Yamaha Virago, when the previous owners actually promised me the bikes have been working and it just been sitting around for a while, um, which was the case, this one is actually faulty. The owner was very honest about it. I did buy it with a fault. Um, kind of took a, a bit of a gamble on that because I wasn't sure what can be wrong with it but the price was good because it's a fault, it's a spares or repairs, right? Um, they are extremely rare these bikes, just try to find Suzuki TU250 for sale um, somewhere on the internet and you would find probably a handful of them um, but yeah, because of the fault I picked it up for really good money whether that was a waste of money or not, time will tell but it's a cute little bike and I'm really eager to work on it. Yes, it does require some work. It's um, a bit of a state, you know, a bit of a condition is rather poor, uh, but it does have potential. I can try to restore it best to its former glory, but first things first, we need to get that engine running. Uh, well, let's get to it. The bike doesn't run properly. What happens, um, it starts, it starts beautifully, it takes over on the choke. As soon as you put the choke off, the bike dies. On top of that, if you try to give it a little bit of a throttle, it dies completely. I can't even feather it in the throttle uh, whatsoever. Let's have a look at that carburetor. I quickly stripped down the seats and uh, petrol tank. The carb is actually very easy to get into, uh, which is a blessing in this case. Um, I've eliminated the petrol tank, so I've got my auxiliary petrol tank over here. Don't try this at home, by the way. This is very dangerous. I've eliminated the airbox. As you can see, I removed the link pipe between the airbox and the carb itself. Uh, and I know I've got a fresh spark plug in there. So it's pretty much down to the carb. Let's see how it looks. So I've got a good battery over here. Fresh petrol. Let's uh, give it some choke. It starts like a dream, right? Runs in a choke. Give it some beef. That's accelerating the choke. You split the choke off a bit. It dies completely. As soon as I touch that throttle with no choke, or very little choke, it dies completely. And that happens in a cold and warm engine. Take two after the carburetor has been through the ultrasonic cleaner. Let's have a look. As soon as I touch that throttle ever so gently, you can see the bike is not happy. We need to think of another solution. The carb of the bike now. 
and what I'm drinking at is um, you can see right here on top there's a well there's a spring a diaphragm and that holds um, a needle as well and if I remember correctly that needle should have five grooves for little circlip washer in there and these five grooves determines how deep the needle goes down to the main jet which will either restrict or allow a bit more petrol to go through right what I'm looking down there as a diaphragm the needle sits right down there on the bottom of that so you have to very carefully remove that there you go let's put it somewhere safe what we got there we got a little circle clip that holds the whole thing in place I'll try to get it out if I can circle clip little plunger that holds the whole mechanism in place and there's a needle down there with a little spring I'm gonna leave that spring alone down there because it just sits in the bottom of that groove and if I remember correctly because there's a washer the needle should have five grooves I believe well this particular um, carp should have five grooves there and the Depending on where the position is, needle goes either deeper down the uh, main jet or sits slightly, slightly higher. So we'll see what that is. But looking at it, it's yeah, as I suspected. So we've got the needle, and you've got one, two, three, four, five grooves. And by factory, I believe that should sit in the middle. So you can adjust it either, you know, sit, drop the needle lower or sit it slightly higher to enrich in the mixture. But um, this one sits on the second from the bottom. Put it right in the middle. And I think the factory setting should be. I mean, that will give me good starting position to play where I want to be so right now this little bad boy we have directly in the middle so you got two grooves on top and two grooves on bottom and that's it in the middle groove so that will give me uh, well hopefully better understanding where we're sitting at when in neutral position if I need to go back to that I can just always drop it down or drop it up it, it don't matter back in. right let's put it back on the bike well, put it back together first, then put it back on the bike, see what we got. It dies completely. Right, so it's not perfect, it's far from it, but um, the main issue which was uh, bogging under the acceleration, when you twist the throttle, the bike was just completely dying and it would not run off the choke. Uh, that's been eliminated, that's far from perfect. It's, it's misfiring like crazy, uh, but I can see there's a blow in the exhaust when it goes two into one, uh, smoke coming from there even right now. So that is, that is probably, um, uh, contributing to the uh, uh, popping and banging and obviously there is no airbox I'm running directly off um, 
the intake which uh, small engines like this does a 250 cc single in small they very uh, very particular about it and no they're not very happy running like that the airbox has been designed by the manufacturers uh, for purpose you know to compress that air and just kind of we're well, not compressed but directed into into that um, not turbulence air I think that's what they call it it's it's there in it's got its own kind of semi micro atmosphere and it's pushing that into that carb I may be talking out of my ass, but that's my understanding of the airboxes is anyway. Manufacturers spend a lot of time designing these airboxes for a reason. Uh, those of you who put filters on your bike because they look cool, you know how much uh, work they need to run correctly. So uh, that's the next thing. Let's see that exhaust. Let's put the airbox back on and I'll uh, try to run again and see what kind of results I'm going to get. But we're not out of the woods yet. Um, the bike doesn't really want to idle as it stands and I've been playing with a uh, let me show you I've been playing with the uh, air mixture screw right here uh, but that doesn't seem to make any difference at the moment and uh, the only way I can get the bike idling with this just uh, is this uh, throttle stopper screw here right there so it stops the throttle all the way or the idle adjuster screw whatever you want to call it but that's maxed out that's all the way down right so the moment I'm release it a little bit, it won't go any further down. I mean, this is as far as it goes. The spring is fully compressed. And only then, just then, the bike idles temporarily. But, you know, it, it's it's not right. It's not healthy. You don't want it to be there. So as soon as I release it, even a couple of turns, uh, it stalls. So that tells me, I believe, the mixture is a little bit too too lean on its running too lean. Maybe not the mixture, but it's just running too lean. So... Uh, I wanted to have it at least halfway there so I have some room for adjustments one way or the other but if it's fully you know maxed out that's not a healthy way to go. 